Thank you for being here. If, it's, if everyone can take their seats, uh, we're getting ready to get started. And did want to make sure everyone knew that, that following the remarks, there will be a time for questions from you. Um, and then that will be followed by our business leaders uh, reading to the children behind you. You, uh, you from the, the press and the media are welcome to stay for that portion of, of this morning's event. So with that, let me go ahead and introduce Margie Fowler. Good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Margie Fowler and I am the new principal here at Creech Road Elementary School. And we're excited to be hosting this event today to discuss the importance of third grade literacy. We have worked hard with our youngest students to help them achieve uh, that milestone, beginning with our, our pre-K students, four-year-old students, continuing on through our third grade. We have shared with you a description of our students and our school in material on the table to my left. Please feel free to peruse that at your leisure. And with that, I guess we're ready to get things started. And so please let me introduce to you Dr. Jim Goodnight, CEO of SACS. Good morning. I want to thank everybody for being here today for the national release of a new report from the Fitness Roundtable. Why reading matters and what to do about it. I also want to thank uh, Principal Margie Fowler and her team at Creech Road Elementary for having us here today. Finally, I see that our new State Superintendent, Mark Johnson, is here, and thank you for coming. The, this report is the culmination of work by a task force of CEOs that I led for the Business Roundtable. And this report is why th this group of North Carolina business leaders that are here today. We all understand that third grade reading proficiency is key to reversing the skills gap. And it, and it will help create sustainable economic growth and ensure that students graduate from high school ready to succeed in our global economy. Let's start with the skills gap, which companies across North Carolina, including SAS and the companies here today, are experiencing. According to the Georgetown Center for Education and Workforce, between 2013 and 2020, so we're halfway there, uh, in our state, STEM-related jobs are expected to grow by 24%, healthcare professionals by 27%, and finance and insurance jobs by 29%. In these fields, in almost all jobs in North Carolina, higher levels of education will be required. In fact, by 2020, 67% of the jobs in North Carolina will require some post-secondary education and training. Currently, only 42% of North Carolinians have the education required for the, the jobs of the future. North Carolina is not alone. Economists predict a national shortfall of 5 million workers to fill jobs requiring post-secondary education and training by 2020. This demand for more highly educated workers was actually accelerated by the recession and recovery, as explained in the BRT report. Of the 11.6 million jobs, added over the last six years, 99% went to workers who had some education or training beyond high school. Through the remaining 1%, only 80,000 jobs were for those with only a high school degree or less. We can reverse these trends by improving third grade reading proficiency. Let me turn things over to Dale Jenkins, CEO of Medical Mutual here in Raleigh. I want to talk a little bit about why the um, third grade is such an important milestone. So if you think back to when you were a child, or perhaps think about your children, or your, in my case, my grandchildren, uh, up until the grade three, you know, it's all about learning to read. But after grade three, it's really about reading to learn. So if you don't achieve proficiency in reading by the end of the third grade, your chances of being successful academically as you migrate through the years is much reduced. Unfortunately, we in North Carolina aren't doing so well in reading proficiency. If you look at the data that's available, and the last year that data was available is 2015, 66% of those graduating from high school aren't reading at a proficient level. And then if you look down through the ranks, 62% of fourth graders are not reading at a proficient level. And the problem is, if you can't read well at the end of the third grade, it's very difficult to catch up. There's really no remediation available, and it's really difficult for you to accelerate your reading so that you achieve proficient levels. 
Uh, you're also less likely to graduate from high school. In fact, you're four times less likely to graduate from high school if you are reading at a proficient level. Now, the Business Roundtable is proposing a, a, a six-step program, a six-step policy that is all designed to promote reading, efficient, uh, reading proficiency. It's obviously focused on children. It's focused all around how do we make those children engaged? How do we make those children excited about learning to read and read well? Now, to date, no state has implemented the suggestions of the Business Roundtable. We want North Carolina to be the first. We're going to meet later today with Governor Cooper, we're going to meet with Senator Berger, Representative Moore, Speaker Moore, and we're going to talk about three specific recommendations that we would like them to focus on. The first one, and you'll hear more about these recommendations from some of the other speakers this morning, the first recommendation is that we develop a comprehensive, coordinated system that really starts from birth, goes all the way through age eight that has accountability built into it, it's aligned, it's coordinated so that we all are on the same page, again, trying to work toward that goal of achieving reading proficiency by the end of grade three. Secondly, we want to uh, make sure that we have data systems, systems that can capture progress, system, systems that can measure progress, and also that systems that allow us to have intervention where necessary so that we make sure that the children are on track so they can read well by the end of the third grade. And then the third recommendation is that we uh, want to see the expansion of really our great program here in North Carolina, which is called North Carolina Pre-K. Uh, it's a high quality program many of you know about. And what we are ad advocates for is, is to make that program available to, available to a, a greater number of our children. We believe these are really practical common sense ideas uh, that are gonna affect all North Carolina. You know, I'm a native of North Carolina. I grew up in the western part of the state in a, in a small town of Forest City, which is Rutherford County. And Rutherford County, like many of our, our, our rural areas, has been hard hit in recent years by the loss of principally manufacturing jobs and textiles and, and furniture. With respect to education, some of those rural counties like Rutherford also don't have the resources and education that we enjoy here in some of the urban markets. You know, they don't have the ability to attract and retain teachers at the level we do here. Certainly they can't attract teachers that have skills in early childhood development. They don't have resources in some terms of private schools. So they face a, a significant challenge. But we believe what we're recommending today will go a long way toward helping children in those markets, helping children in those counties achieve the level of reading that we think is important for, uh, in order to be successful as, as you embrace the world today. You know, this is, a, again, a, we think good ideas. It's, it's not just good ideas, it's really the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for our children. If a child can read, if a child can read proficiently, that's gonna unlock the future for them like nothing else. It's the right thing to do for our economy. As Jim talked about, the skills gap, this addresses that in a proactive way. And it's the right thing to do for our citizens because our citizens all wanna maximize their abilities. And if you can't read, you can't do that. So thank you for your time. I'd now like to turn it over to Charles Bowman with Bank of America. I'm actually a stand-in for our CEO, Brian Moynihan, uh, who regrets he couldn't be here and sends his apologies, uh, but I'll try to uh, do justice to, uh, as a stand-in for Brian. Um, just to outline the, or support the, uh, our commitment to the policies that Dale just mentioned, I can't think of anything more important to the economic vitality of our state uh, than what we're talking about here today. And, and one important ingredient in all that is around the legislative activity that goes on to help support these. Uh, 36 states uh, have some sort of legislation that's been inter introduced or passed to address third grade reading proficiency. And here in North Carolina, uh, we've done that as well through Read to Achieve. Uh, it was passed in 2012. Uh, and really aimed at helping students achieve proficiency uh, by third grade. Uh, since that law was passed, you've seen some other programs. Uh, you've seen some summer reading programs, entry to kindergarten. Uh, in some ways, that has helped expand that legislation. Uh, but there's still yet more to be done. Um, one of the key questions in all this uh, is not so much around which agency or which department deals with birth through third grade, uh, but it's how, as Dale mentioned, how these programs are aligned. You can't just have the programs, you've got to have high quality programs, and this is a, this is a team sport. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. 
it takes many agencies and we call it systems building, not programs. You need great programs, but you need to build those systems and those connections and align those in a co coordinated fashion. Um, the North Carolina, in North Carolina, we've taken some initial steps uh, to do that, to bring that cohesive and coordinated system to bear. And last year, our General Assembly directed a number of state agencies to come up with a comprehensive approach to early childhood at birth through third grade. We very much support those efforts and thank the General Assembly for putting those in motion. Um, that report, I think, is due out in January of next year. But the most important thing is that that report not stay on the shelf. Um, I told some other people here in, uh, earlier this week, hope is never a strategy and we can no longer continue to admire the problem. But we need to establish that alignment, that coordination, and I'll give you the key word, accountability. Accountability to each other, to our children, to our state. Um, and as those recommendations come out, we will continue to urge the governor and our General Assembly to take those recommendations to heart, to vet them, to tweak them, to change them, to make them the most effective force for accomplishing what will be a really, really great step to a much brighter future for our children. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Jim Whitehurst, the CEO of Red Hat. So Jim? I'd like to discuss the second po policy recommendation that we're making today, and that's the need for connected data systems to track children's progress and allow for early intervention uh, to keep children progressing towards third grade literacy. You know, as Michael Bloomberg once said, in God we trust, for everything else, bring data. <laughs> if North Carolina is truly going to have a birth through eighth grade comprehensive aligned early learning uh, system designed to increase third grade reading proficiency, we need to have the data. Relevant data in the system needs to be collected, managed, and analyzed. And that data needs to talk to each other. And that's not happening today. As explained in the Business Roundtable report, North Carolina is leading a consortium of nine states and the District of Columbia to develop a state-of-the-art K-3 formative assessment that includes literacy and reading. That system will use kindergarten entry assessments to generate a, a student profile uh, of learning that begins in kindergarten and continues through third grade. It makes actual information available to teachers and parents regarding the children's progress and uh, it contributes data to the state's longitudinal data, data system. But the system needs to be expanded. In order to ensure that North Carolina's children are on track to read at grade level by third grade, we need to understand all the indicators that research tells us impact early literacy. Investing in continuous data reporting and analy analytics will help ensure that children are on track to develop reading proficiency. In order to do that, school leaders, teachers, and parents uh, will know how children are progressing and be able to intervene and modify instruction uh, for those when necessary. In addition, policymakers and others can make data-driven decisions about changes in policies, uh, practices, and investments that impact third grade uh, reading proficiency. An initiative underway in our state today called NC Pathways to Grade Level Reading uh, Initiative has brought together over 100 early literacy experts, policymakers, educators, business leaders, and others to determine what those indicators are. As a starting point, NC Pathways has identified 12 indicators that need to be tracked in order to ensure children will be reading proficiently at the end of third grade. Some of these data points are not currently being measured here in North Carolina. Others are measured but because they live in separate, disparate, siloed uh, state agencies, the data is not correlated and no meaningful analysis can be done. The General Assembly's directive for the creation of a comprehensive birth to age eight plan includes consideration of the NC Pathways uh, indicators. Again, we applaud the General Assembly for identifying this data um, in their directive. We urge Governor Cooper and the General Assembly to fully embrace the importance of collecting, managing, and analyzing relevant data, including the data indicators identified in NC Pathways Initiative, and incorporating a connected data system into a comprehensive birth to eight, uh, age eight system being designed. And I'm president of AT&T North Carolina, and I am very inspired by this initiative that's led by these great business roundtable leaders. Um, I want to speak to you this morning about our third policy recommendation today, increasing access to North Carolina 
pre-K because I grew up in a neighborhood just two blocks from here. For those of you that's familiar, that's Idlewood up there. Um, and several of uh, my family went to, family members went to school here. Um, and, but more importantly, I have seen the impact that a strong pre-K program and the value that it has provided to my family members who are today exceeding or have exceeded their academic journey and later in life. High quality pre-K pre programs are the foundation on which a comprehensive system of literacy development should be built. Without this foundation, too many children will enter elementary school already lagging behind in their skills that predict reading proficiency later in grades. Extensive, vigorous research, all detailed in the BRT report, demonstrates that high quality pre-K programs delivered at a scale to thousands of children can significantly improve students' readiness for kindergarten. These studies have found that children in these programs are six to eight months ahead of their peers on literacy development when they enter kindergarten, a significant amount of time when you're talking about five-year-olds. A new report from Duke University that was released late last year, and it's not in the BRT report, shows that the benefits from the North Carolina pre-K continue through elementary school. The Duke report also looks at each of North Carolina's 100 counties and gives a detailed evaluation of children in our North Carolina pre-K program through the end of elementary school. This study has been ongoing for 13 years and has involved about a million children. The study found that children who participate in North Carolina pre-K, they have higher math and reading test scores, there's a reduction in special education placements, and there's also reductions in being held back in grades third, three, four, and five. The study also shows that positive impacts on participating in North Carolina pre-K do not fade out over time. Rather, the impacts either hold steady or significantly increase through fifth grade. Detailed in the BRT report are other studies that have followed children participating in quality pre-K programs for even longer periods of time. This research confirms that participating in these programs increase high school graduation rates increases enrollment in post-secondary training and education, and increases adult wages. So now I'm going to turn it over to Tom Nelson, CEO of National Gypsy. My company and I understand the need for all children to have access to high-quality pre-K experience, especially those who are most at risk or struggling in school. In fact, we're part of an effort in Mecklenburg County, where we're located, to expand pre-K. We're working with other companies on this effort, including members of the CEO task force, Mike Lamott, CEO of Ingersoll Rand, and Brian Moynihan, CEO of Bank of America. But if we want to ensure our most at-risk children in North Carolina are reading proficiently by the end of the third grade, we need to expand our NC pre-K program for all eligible children. I want to emphasize what Vanessa said about the lasting positive impacts of pre-K programs. Key to attaining those lasting benefits is the quality of the program. As noted in the BRT report, researchers have identified important measurable components of pre-K quality that help children make greater gains in literacy and other important developmental areas. Our NC Pre-K program is a national model for this kind of high quality. In fact, it's, one, it's only one of five states that meet all of the quality components identified by the National Institute for Early Education Research, known as NEAR. When those quality components are in place, quantifiable returns on investment are produced. Duke University researchers estimate that our NC Pre-K program creates a net savings of $358 for every third grade student 
in the state due to significant reductions in the number of students requiring placement in special education. In the longer term, returns on investment of at least $5 for every dollar investment are well documented. So what's the status of our prep participation in our high quality NC pre-K program? Last year, according to the General Assembly, 29,400 North Carolina four-year-olds participated in the program. The problem? Over 66,000 children are eligible for the program. Do the math. That means over 36,000 children, or 55% of the eligible children that are four-year-olds, are not being served. Since 2011, the General Assembly has improved increases to funding for NC Pre-K. However, too many eligible children remain unable to access the program. Last year, for example, funding for the program was increased. However, the funding only opened up access for an additional 290 students. That's just slightly more than one half of 1% of the over 36,000 children who are now being served. We're asking the General Assembly and Governor Cooper not just to commit to helping North Carolina's youngest children, we urge them to do two things. First, develop a formalized multi-year plan to move toward giving all families with eligible children access to NC Pre-K. And second, turn this plan into reality by making a meaningful and recurring investment toward that goal, starting with this year's budget. We recognize that increasing access to high quality pre-K has a significant cost. But when such extensive research shows that these programs get children on the path to reading proficiency, it's money well spent. Jim, back to you. Well, North Carolina can be a national model for achieving third grade literacy if we move forward with these policy recommendations. Are we here today are committed to improving early literacy because it is essential to the children of North Carolina, to North Carolina businesses, and to our state's economy. This afternoon, we will be uh, meeting with uh, Governor Cooper, Senator Berger, and Speaker Moore to, dis to discuss this report and our policy recommendations. We look forward to working with the General Assembly, the Governor, and others to put into place policies and programs that will ensure all North Carolina children are reading proficiently by the end of third grade. Now let's open it up to any, any questions. Yes? I put the emphasis on pre-K. Um, there's some skepticism, though, among some legislators. I've heard some of them call it uh, babysitting. So how do you get past that reluctance to uh, add significantly more slots? Well, the business roundtable report goes into great detail about how effective uh, pre-K is and how it, how it does, in fact, keep those kids all the way through fifth grade at, uh, ahead, ahead, ahead of the others. So, uh, I, and again, we just had the Duke report that came out uh, that, that also shows that there is no fade out. There, is, there are some people, I think, at the General Assembly that believe in fade out, and uh, it, it just doesn't happen.